Just a month after launching GPT 4.1 in the API, OpenAI has now made it available to chat GPT users as well. Let's start with the official OpenAI blog post published on April 14, 2025. The subtitle is especially eye-catching. A new series of GPT models featuring major improvements in coding, instruction following, and long context, plus our first ever nano model. This is a post from the official OpenAI account, and this is big news for many users. By popular request, GPT 4.1 will be available directly in ChatGPT starting today. So after a month in the API, it's now hitting the mainstream interface. They continue, GPT 4.1 is a specialized model that excels at coding tasks and instruction following. Because it's faster, it's a great alternative to OpenAI 03 and 04 Mini for everyday coding needs. Scrolling through their thread, they clarify the rollout. Plus, Pro and Team users will be able to access GPT-41 via the More Models dropdown in the Model Picker. Enterprise and Edu users will get access in the coming weeks. And also, we're also introducing GPT-41 Mini, replacing GPT-40 Mini in ChatGPT for all users. So the Mini version gets a wide release and a direct replacement. Okay, let's pick up on something that Lior on X posted just a couple of days ago. He says OpenAI quietly released their GPT 4.1 prompting guide. It's a must read if you're using agents or LLMs, and he includes this snapshot from the guide. The image clearly states GPT 4.1 prompting guide, authored by Noah McCallum and Julian Lee from OpenAI. The first section highlighted is agentic workflows. The text mentions that the GPT-4.1 family of models represents a significant step forward from GPT-4.0 in capabilities across coding, instruction following, and long context. And they emphasize that in model training, they focused on a diverse range of agentic problem-solving trajectories. This aligns perfectly with what we've been seeing about GPT-4.1 strengths. This is from Min Choi, a well-known AI educator he tweeted, OpenAI dropped GPT-4.1. But most people missed the secret. They dropped a new prompting guide, 10 powerful tips to unlock its full potential, followed by a thread. Let's look at Min Choi's summary of these tips. First up, be direct and clear. He says, GPT-4.1 follows instructions literally, say exactly what you want. Be specific. Vague prompts equals vague answers. And the image from the guide itself reinforces this, stating, GPT-4.1 is trained to follow instructions more closely and more literally than its predecessors, which tended to more liberally infer intent from user and system prompts. This is a really key takeaway. The guide also adds, if model behavior is different from what you expect, a single sentence firmly and unequivocally clarifying your desired behavior is almost always sufficient to steer the model on course and a crucial warning for those migrating prompts. Existing prompts optimized for other models may not immediately work with this model because existing instructions are followed more closely and implicit rules are no longer being as strongly inferred. So, less mind reading, more explicit instruction needed. Min Choi's second tip, use agent mode for tasks. He advises, if you're building bots slash agents, tell it to keep going, keep solving the task until it's done, don't stop early. Tell it to use tools. If you don't know something, use your tools, don't guess. And optionally, tell it to plan. The guide image shows sections on persistence. You are an agent. Please keep going until the user's query is completely resolved. And tool calling. Use your tools. Do not guess or make up an answer. This is all about making agents more robust and reliable. Third tip. Want better thinking? Ask for it. Min Choi explains. GPT-4.1 doesn't naturally reason internally, but you can prompt it to think aloud, like think step-by-step step before you answer. This helps with planning and complex tasks. The guide image shows planning with the directive, you must plan extensively before each function call and reflect extensively on the outcomes of the previous function call before proceeding further. So you need to explicitly trigger that reasoning process. Fourth, handling long docs. Min Choi notes, GPT-4.1 handles very long inputs well. Put instructions both at the top and bottom of long inputs if possible. The guide's prompt organization section backs this up. Especially in long context usage, ideally place your instructions at both the beginning and end of the provided context, as we found this to perform better than only above or below. 
This is a classic technique for maintaining focus in long contexts. Good to see it confirmed here. Tip number five is chain of thought prompts. Min Choi says, use when solving harder problems, giving an example of breaking down the question and using structured reasoning. The guide image details a reasoning strategy involving query analysis, context analysis, and synthesis. This is about structuring the model's approach to complex information retrieval and problem solving. Sixth, nail instruction following. Min Choi advises, make a clear instruction section, use bullet points and ordered lists, add real examples for tricky behaviors, and if something's wrong, check for conflicting instructions, missing examples, or detail issues. The guide image elaborates, start with an overall response rules or instructions section. And critically, if behavior still isn't working as expected, check for conflicting, underspecified, or wrong instructions and examples. GPT 4.1 tends to follow the one closer to the end of the prompt. That's a super specific and useful tidbit about how it resolves conflicts. Seventh tip, for tools, use API fields. Min Choi says, add tools using the proper API tools field. Name tools clearly, add short but clear descriptions. Add usage examples at the end of the prompt, not inside the description. The guide highlights this too, encouraging developers to exclusively use the tools field to pass tools, rather than manually injecting tool descriptions into your prompt. And to provide an examples section in your system prompt and place the examples there. This is for cleaner, more robust tool integration. Eighth, format tips. Min Choi suggests, use Markdown for sections and lists. Use XML or structured formats for lots of documents. Example, doc ID equals one, title equals guide. This is the content doc. Avoid JSON for huge inputs. It performs worse for long content. The guide image recommends Markdown. Notes XML performs well. And while JSON is well understood, it can be verbose and might have issues with large inputs. Interesting performance implications there. Ninth, common pitfalls to avoid. This is a big one. Min Choi lists tool misuse, repetition, and over-explaining. The guide image adds that models might hallucinate tool inputs if they don't have enough info, and suggests prompting if you don't have enough information to call the tool, ask the user for the information you need. It also notes models can be repetitive with sample phrases and can be overly verbose without specific instructions. These are practical troubleshooting tips. And finally, tip number 10. For devs, apply patches like a pro. Min Choi states, GPT 4.1 does well generating diffs. Use the V4A format. No need for line numbers, context is enough. The guide elaborates that the GPT 4.1 family features substantially improved diff capabilities, and they've even open sourced a recommended diff format. The image shows examples like a Python diff and alternatives like search slash replace and pseudo XML. That's a neat specific capability for developers. So this prompting guide is clearly an invaluable resource for anyone working with GPT 4.1. Now let's see some community reactions. This is an interesting one from Ethan Malik. The tweet text says, not bad from GPT 4.1, create something I can paste into P5JS that will startle me with its cleverness in creating something that invokes the control panel of a starship in the distant future. First go, no errors. And his video shows exactly that a pretty cool interactive starship control panel. You can see a radar sweep, various status indicators like online, fail, reset, warn, and interactive on-off buttons. Generating this kind of functional and visually appealing interface from a natural language prompt, especially without errors on the first try, really showcases its coding prowess. Here's another user experience from Melvin Vivas. He says, GPT 4.1 is now my senior software architect, product manager. GPT 4.1 is great at instruction following, so I asked it to work with me to build an app. It's really good for iterating, great for planning and brainstorming. Min Choi, who we heard from earlier, tweets, OpenAI just dropped GPT 4.1 and it cooks. Better coding, sharper instructions, 1M context tokens. Here's what you need to know and includes a helpful comparison image. Clicking into Min Choi's image, we get this fantastic summary table comparing GPT-4.1 and 4.1 Nano. GPT-4.1 is the flagship GPT model for complex tasks. 4.1 Mini is balanced for intelligence, speed, and cost. It's cheaper. 4.1 Nano is the fastest, most cost-effective GPT-4.1 model, and it's very attractively priced. 
All three models boast that 1 million token context window. This table is a great way to see the trade-offs at a glance. Finally, let's look at some performance cost analysis. This is from Morgan at Morcon on X, who says, GPT 4.1 is such an underrated model and shares this health bench performance cost frontier graph. The y-axis is the health bench score and the x-axis is the inference cost per example. We can see various models plotted with their launch dates. The GPT 4.1 family, Nano, Mini, and the full 4.1, all dated April 2025, are positioned very favorably, while maintaining a competitive cost compared to some of the other high-performing O-series models shown at the top right. So continuing down that OpenAI developers thread, they start backing up their claims with some data. First up, we see a SWE bench verified accuracy graph. And wow, GPT-4.1 is way out in front at 56% accuracy. For context, SWE Bench, or Software Engineering Bench, tests these models on their ability to solve real-world coding issues from GitHub. The previous GPT-4.0, dated November 2024 in this graph, is at 33%, so that's a massive leap in coding capability. Next, they show an internal OpenAI instructions following eval accuracy graph, specifically on a hard subset. Again, GPT-4.1 leads with 49% accuracy. GPT-4.0 from November 2024 is down at 29%. This really underscores those major improvements on instruction following they highlighted, especially on more challenging tasks. Then they tackle long context understanding. The tweet says, all three models can now handle up to 1 million tokens of context over 8x the React codebase, so they can process large repositories and lots of long documents. And to showcase this, they're releasing OpenAI MRCR, a new open source eval that tests the ability to attend to specific information in context, even among similar distractors. The graph shows OpenAI MRCR accuracy, which is an eight needle accuracy test versus input tokens. If we look at the purple line for GPT 4.1, it maintains significantly higher accuracy as the input token count increases, especially compared to older models you can see GPT-4.1 maintaining its lead even out to 1,024,000 ,000 tokens. This is crucial for that 1 million token context window to be truly useful. Moving on, OpenAI developers then tweet about cost. On cost, GPT-4.1 pushes model performance forward at every point on the latency curve. These new models are 26% cheaper than GPT-4.0 on median queries, and Nano is our fastest and cheapest model ever. That's a big win for developers. Next, there's a note about API availability. GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini will remain available in the API. While we plan to continue supporting them, we think most developers will benefit from switching to GPT-41. And they again mention the prompting guide to help with that transition, which we've already explored. And one final important note, we'll also begin deprecating GPT-4.5 preview in the API today, as GPT-4.1 offers improved or similar performance on many key capabilities at lower latency and cost. Okay, switching over to that OpenAI blog post itself, the conclusion really sums up their vision for GPT-4.1. GPT-4.1 is a significant step forward in the practical application of AI. By focusing closely on real-world developer needs, ranging from coding to instruction following and long context understanding, these models unlock new possibilities for building intelligent systems and sophisticated agentic applications.